Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Let me know when you come on. Can you guys hear me okay? Let me just double check my audio. Can everybody hear me okay? Hope you guys are doing well. Good morning, Mel. Um, good morning. My, for some reason, it keeps coming up and my mic is like showing that it's not working. So if for any reason I lose sound, let me know and I'll fix it. Good morning. All right. Hope you guys are doing great. Um, I'm Teresa with Teresa Renee Art. And today we're going to be talking about bead paste and uh, expand paste. All right. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Oh. What is going on? It's like it keeps it keeps flashing. Uh, it keeps flashing up. But as long as you guys can hear me, I'm going to keep rolling. Hold on one second. Let me. Oh, you know what? Oh. There we go. How's that? Is that better? Sorry. For some reason, my um, I don't know. My I'm having a little technical difficulties on my end from what I'm seeing. <laughs> so anyway, hope you guys are doing great. Uh, we're going to um, we're going to do a couple of couple more specialty paste. This is bead paste and expand paste. So I'm super excited about those two. Um, these are not ones that we use very frequently, so they're they're really unique. And I wanted to show them to you. All right, you guys. So um, hope you guys had a great start to your weekend. A um, couple of house rules since we are broadcasting like five different places we are also saving these tutorials for um longevity to have as resources for all of you we're going to ask that you hold your questions until the end um, and to please keep your questions on topic as well uh related to the products that we're discussing um, at the end i will repeat the question and then i will answer the question um, and then I would also ask that you please allow me to answer the questions so that I can also record it as well. So you're so welcome. I'm so glad that you guys are enjoying it. This is episode six in our 40 part series. We pretty much have it all mapped out. Um, there are a couple, we're not doing every, every single thing, but we are doing the major things. There are just some things that are self-explanatory. Um, next week, we're going to be covering waxes. Uh, which is awesome. So we're going to be able to see all the different types of waxes, etc. So um, I think that's about it in terms of housekeeping. We're going to switch the camera view and go right into the demo. This should be a pretty short one today. Let me know if you can still hear. Hopefully you guys can still hear um, just fine. So what we're going to be doing is we are going to be looking first at bead paste and good morning, Tina. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. We're going to be looking first at bead paste. Um, and I want to show you this. So bead paste has, it's a white creamy paste. Um, it does dry transparent and it has these beautiful, it's real glass. It has these beautiful um, glass beads in it. Uh, and I don't know how well you can see. They're sort of interspersed um, throughout. Uh, when you open the jar, you do need to mix it up a little bit to make sure that um, everything is distributed well, especially since... Um, especially if it's been like the first time you've opened it, if it's been sitting for a little while. Um, why is it doing this? Okay, sorry. My browser has lost connection to my camera. Let's try this again. Restart my browser. I don't want to restart my browser. Let's try this again. Sorry. Okay, sorry about that. I don't know what's going on. All right, so you do want to mix it up a little bit and make sure that it's all mixed up before you use it. Um, another housekeeping tip on this particular product, I will say um, 
you really, Robin and I found out about this like a couple of weeks ago because she was over and we were playing with this. So you definitely want to make sure that you let this product air dry. If you force it dry, it is likely to turn white, which is not the result you want. You want it to be transparent. Um, so Robin, I don't know that demo that we did. Did it ever turn white? Did it ever turn transparent or did it stay white? Because we forced it dry and then it turned white. So you definitely want to let it dry on its own. But you can get some really cool effects with this. Um, and I've seen it used a few different ways. Um, so this is one effect and it's kind of like a fun alternative to crackle. Um, yeah, so she said it's sort of dried, transparent, but not fully. So definitely let it air dry on its own because if you force it dry, it has a tendency to turn white. Um, so a fun alternative to crackle, you guys. And what I did was I decoupaged this image on and then I just um, spread the bead paste over the top and look at that that uh, finish that it gave us. So it's a, it's a transparent bead finish. It does have a bead texture, but it's tiny little glass beads all over the image. So we're gonna play around with this some more. This was, I did it last night and I let it dry overnight. Um, you can also use it through a stencil. So I have you, I used it through a stencil and you can see I, I forgot and I tried to dry it <laughs> with a hair dryer to speed it up. Um, so it did leave behind a little bit of white, um, but it is mostly transparent. So if I hold it, um, you know, if I hold it with this little piece of paper underneath it, you can see the texture of that stencil as well. Um, so it is, it does leave a 3D texture. There are little beads in there. So we're going to play around with that. And then we're also going to play around with the expand paste as well. That one is not as finicky. You, This one you actually need to use heat in order for it to work properly. So we're going to use both today on a simple project. We're going to use the new um, Decoupage Queen um, beach papers. Um, and I'm going to do these little shells. So we're going to just play around with it a little bit. Um, actually, you know what? I'm going to use the smaller ones. So we're going to play around and try to get some fun, um, some fun effects here. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut out my image and play around with this a little bit. So let's see. Let me find my scissors. There they are. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. All right. So we're going to play around with this a little bit. We're going to do these two white shells. You guys, I got these shells from my friend um, Amanda at Metal Modern Design. She sells all kinds of um, coastal products, um, things for glass resin, etc. So I got these shells from her. Check her out if you're not already following her. But these are cute because they're already white. So they're a fun surface for decoupage. I know Robin did a couple of these last year. Um, so we're going to play around with two of these today. Just a simple project really to demonstrate some of these um, products. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to cut this out a little bit more. And see if I can... I think I want, I don't know which part I want. I think I just want this part here. I don't think I need another day in paradise because I want a little bit of grunge because I'm going to put a little bit of grunge texture on there. Um, so I'm just going to work around this curved surface here. Oh, I don't want that part there. So let's do this. Let's do up in here. So I'm just ripping a little bit because I'm decoupaging on a curved surface. You guys may know that trick already. And then I'm not trying to cut it exactly out to shape. Um, then this one, I actually want that part up there. So I'm going to cut this bottom part down here. And good morning. Good morning. Thank you. 
I haven't used these papers yet, so I'm excited to incorporate these into this demo today. Um, all right, so let's get these on here. You know, and I'm not trying to be super fancy or whatever. It's just, uh, this is just a demo, so I'm not too worried about um, perfection. Just to show these other products. So let's get this on here. And this is a fun, if you guys haven't done shells before, it is a, a fun um, coastal beach type project. Good for people, good gift giving for people who might have like a beach house or a lake house or something. So if you ever get invited to someone's beach house for a weekend and you want to take them a, a little present, this is a fun idea. I saw um, Lynn from l &J Goods. I don't know if you guys saw her uh, little beach cabanas yesterday. They were so cute. But she said the same thing, like, this would be fun if you, a fun housewarming gift to somebody, you know, buy some coastal property or you get invited to the beach for a weekend. All right. Yeah, it's great to put soaps in and a bathroom as well. So little fun little um, trinket holders for ring holders or something like that. So all kinds of little uses. And the seashell is slightly textured. All right, and now we're going to come in and dry this. Let's dry it really good. Right. And this one too. Let's make sure we're sealed down everywhere. All right. now, save these for later. Let me actually pull this out so I don't. Hello, hello. Hi, everybody. All right, let's get these dry. Mara, I saw your post. Uh, I'm going to try to call you later today. I need to get the full story about what happened. I hope you're okay. All right, let's dry.
so I should be dry enough to sand off my edges here. These things are noisy, you guys. Get a nice clean edge. Okay, do the same down here. Good morning, everybody. So my daughter, I'm a little bit tired, you guys. I got home at 1230 midnight last night. My daughter and I went to see um, Dune 2. She, she thinks Timothy Chalamet is awesome. So I took her to see that. We went to the 830 showing. And... Um, we took a friend of hers too. I had to take her friend home, which was another 30 minutes after the movie. So anyway, I'm a little bit tired tonight. That's why I'm not so talkative. <laughs> it was, it was really good. I, um, she actually made me sit through the first one so I would know what was going on. And I will have to say the first one I didn't think was that great, but I actually really did like the second one and I figured like I kind of had to see the second one if I invested so much time in the first one um but now that I've seen both of them I am kind of into it I'll definitely see the third one when it comes out so it was good it's, but it's definitely not uh it's you got to follow along it's definitely on the epic and intense scale for sure okay so first we're going to start with expand paste and basically what i'm going to do with the expand paste is i'm going to go around and i'm going to um, fill in my white areas with the expand paste to kind of give it some crusty uh, like crusty barnacle frame. So that's what we're going to do first with the expand paste. Um, you, with expand paste, you know, it's, your results are really going to vary, but um, you don't really need all that much. You know, you need like maybe a thin layer all the way around. Um, and again, with this stuff too, you want to, um, mix it up really well too it does get kind of thick when it's sitting in the jar but it's totally fine even if it's thick um, so you're going to just kind of take it and i'm just taking it and applying it along the sides with a palette knife and it will stick don't worry it will stick and i'm going to kind of go all the way around um, so this stuff puffs up it's very similar to moss paste um, in fact, I almost think it's the same thing as moss paste, uh, just the white version of it. I don't know that for sure, but if I had to guess, um, I would say they, they are the same. So think of this as like a more versatile, in fact, if you don't have moss paste and you have this one, you can always tint it or um, paint it green after. All right, so I've gone all the way around. Uh, I'm just gonna do, I think I'm just gonna do one at a time here. All right, so now I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually zoom in so, so you can see what's happening. 
And I think I'm going to um, take another palette knife and hold it steady. So you definitely need a lot of heat and it does take a while. Uh, but again, just like all these products, if you hold it on there for too long, it can burn. So you, you know, you kind of need to move it around, do it sort of gradually. Don't hold it too close. Pretty much treat it the same way you might treat um, the moss paste or even the crackle product if you're trying to force dry the crackle. It's starting to puff up already. And it's going to form, I like, to, I like it on uh, beach type product projects because it creates like little crusty, almost like barnacles. I'm spinning it around with a palette knife because with all this heat, it's starting to get really hot and I don't want to burn myself. All right, so now on this side, you can see it's going to start really puffing up. You do have to be a little bit patient with it. There we go. You see it puffing up a little bit here. And you can keep going until it's puffing the way you like it. So here we go. We've got some puffiness happening. So you just have to be a little bit patient with it because it does take a little while to act, to react. Because remember, it's got to dry first and then it's going to start working its magic. And they're like little foamy, um, like little foamy puffs. Be careful not to burn it. Because it can scorch.
Little foamy puffs. That's right. It's like Rice Krispies pop in or something. I got a couple stubborn spots. And you can always come in and add more. All right. So I think that's good. This is going to be really hot. So I think that looks pretty good. Um, yeah, except I think it's, it's much, um, um, puffier right than embossing powder so once it's dry and you have your little foamy puffs the way you like them you can come in and uh paint them so we'll paint them a little bit i think we'll do let's do oh, we'll do this one this is the greenish silver Mom, yes sweetie do you know where the cat is do I know where the cat is? Yeah. No, okay. I haven't seen him. And if you shake the food bag, he might come. All right, so we're just gonna take a little paintbrush here. And I'm using the delicate metallic and greenish silver. And I'm gonna paint these little foamy puffs. Where is my water? Rare. I just had it. Oh, here it is. No. Sorry, guys. All right. Oops. Oof. All right. So this is the greenish silver. And I am going to come along here and I'm going to paint it with the greenish silver. And I'm doing it kind of watered down so it'll spread evenly. So see how pretty that effect gives. And you could mix it up with like coral colors or something. Um, I, do, I sometimes use this when I want to frame something, but I don't want to use a mold. It's just another way to add a little bit of dimension without always, you know, we tend to, we love our molds. We use them a lot, but sometimes you want a fun alternative. And I'll save that, I'll save that other one to do off camera. I don't need to do both of them here because I'm literally going to do the exact same thing. So all right, so it's puffy. It does have structure to it as well. Um, so look how pretty that is. Kind of looks like sea glass or something around the edges. All right, let's dry this.
All right, we're pretty dry there. Um, yeah, so it's a fun way to hide your edges, you know, without necessarily, it's like kind of automatic blending, right? So I picked a color that was very similar to the color scheme in there and it just sort of automatically did the blending work for me. Um, so another thing you can do because this is textured, you can now take and add a little bit of wax to it as well. So if I took um, a little bit of, let's just say sparkling silver, I could come in with my sparkling silver and just sort of dust the tops of my little foam puffs and make it look like little, you could make it look like little pearls. Okay. Little encrusted pearls. So it, so see what I did. So I used it for like a jeweled effect. Um, but this is also a very popular product. If you're doing rust and grunge, it really handles rust and grunge very well. Uh, I tend to do a lot of that. So I wanted to do something a little bit more pretty and sparkly here. Okay. So if I now take that and then I cover my image with the bead paste, um, you're not going to really be able to see the end result until I post it tomorrow um, because the bead paste, I want to show you, it's going to go on pretty white and then it's going to take, it's going to have to dry like overnight. But I'm just brushing it on with a brush because this is a curved surface. Um, it's not going to take to my palette knife very well. Um, but it is going to end up with the same effect as this look right here. So that's one way to use bead paste as like a um, texture, kind of an alternative, I guess, to crackle. We tend to, we reach for crackle a lot, but there are lots of, I mean, even within the Crackle family, and we haven't talked about Crackle yet, but within the Crackle family, there's so many different options to choose from, but then there are also options that aren't Crackle that you can still achieve a very fun um, finish. Okay, so that's what I'm gonna do, and I'm gonna let that sit and dry overnight and then it's going to end up with this beautiful kind of sparkly shimmery look to it um bead paste you can also so we're done with the expand paste demo but i wanted to show you a couple of things a couple more things on bead paste bead paste you can also um mix with you can paint over it you can add wax to the top so i can now take like my sparkling silver and kind of outline the sides with my bead paste. Um, so you can see it will, like when you add a little bit of wax paste, it will show those beads really well. But you can also, since it does dry mostly transparent, you can also um, mix uh, mica powders and other things with it. Um, so we're gonna do a little bit of gold here. First, I'm going to paint this uh, a different color. <clears throat> I think I'm going to paint it. Let's just paint it in this pretty uh, bl blue color that we have right here in front of us. Because why not? So I'm going to paint this. And this is Decor Paint Chalky um, in Country Blue. So I'm going to paint this little demo board. And then we're going to mix some bead paste with some gold metallic powder and then we're going to run it through a stencil and then i will show you so i am doing the blogs now i have updated the blog if you go to the royalcourtarts.com forward slash blog you can see the write-ups of the last 
uh, five sessions there. And I am also posting pictures of our completed demos there as well. Um, so you can see how our projects turn out. So I will also update this one. That's a super handy resource. If you forget something or if you need a refresher, it's also got the, um, the uh, videos saved as well. Okay. Egg decorating. Oh yeah, let's do an egg. Why not? Let's do an egg on here. We'll do the egg stencil on here. Thank you, Sue. Okay. I think this would be super cute. Let's do it with this one. And then you know, let's do it with that one. All right. So let me grab, this is the metal pigment and I actually want gold the metal pigment in gold and I am going to mix up a little bit here with this bead paste let's mix some up all right Mix a little bit of that up with some gold metal pigment. So you can color your bead paste as well with mica powders or pigments. It doesn't look like much when it's first mixed, but when it dries, it will, you'll be able to see all that beautiful gold. Okay. You can use any, any mica powder or colorant. You could also use transparent pigments as well. So we're going to, uh-oh, camera. Sorry, guys. I think it might be time to get a new overhead camera, you guys. So sorry. I will get that done this week. Sorry about that. So here's where I mixed the um, pigment. This is what it looks like. All right. And we're going to run that through the stencil. All right, so you can see. And then we'll take a picture of this when it's dry. So you can see that too. So because it does have beads, it is super chunky and it's not gonna scrape like super clean like some of the other pastes that we've done have because it is leaving behind little tiny glass beads. So again, just like we've talked about with some of the other products, you don't want to um, flush this down your sink. 
you really want to clean it up with a baby wipe first. here and that's going to be super cute when it dries so it's going to have all that 3d beautiful 3d texture all the beads and then it's also going to be gold so you can sort of start to see that as well um, so if you want to you know if you want to venture out and do something beyond just you know, you like the raised stenciling, but now you want to get really, really fancy with some raised stenciling. This product is going to be your friend. Okay, so you guys, I think that is really about it um, for the demo. Uh, you can see, I mean, they're pretty, they're both pretty simple to use. Um, remember no heat on your bead paste because it will turn uh, white so we don't want to heat that up we want to let it dry completely on its own you want to clean any stencils or surfaces um, any products that you've used with the bead paste you want to clean that with a baby wipe or a damp towel because you don't want these glass beads going down your drain um expand paste you have to be a little bit patient with it and go around multiple times you can burn it so let me know you guys now is your chance let me know what questions you have about these particular products and i will try to answer them you had no idea how to use it yeah um a link to the blog so if somebody can post a link to the blog it's the Royal Court Arts forward slash uh, royalcourtarts.com forward slash blog. Uh, you can also color it. You could you could color it after the fact with waxes once it dries. Um, you could probably add a little bit of paint in there. I wouldn't use too much though. Um, Nicole, I don't think it, it depends. So you're not going to get cl clean, crisp edges because it's going to puff up. So you might lose the detail of the stencil, um, but it will go through a stencil. It's just probably not going to have the effect that you want um, for the expand paste. Her question was, can you put the expand paste through a stencil as well? Um, Let's see, what other question? Any other questions? Uh, a couple people said they had no idea how to use it. Okay, you guys, so I'll be back on Tuesday. I'm gonna be live on Tuesday with, um, we're gonna be starting a new project. If you don't follow me, you can follow me at Teresa Renee Art, and I do go live on Tuesdays and Thursdays. I only use Pentart products, you guys, so if you wanna see, these products in use and practice. Um, this is These are all I use, so um, including paints and everything. I don't use any other brands. Um, so you can always follow me and watch me as I do product projects on Tuesdays and Thursdays. All right, you guys, um, uh, Miriam asked, do we need to seal the expand paste? No, not really. Um, you know, it's it's stuck on there pretty well. And again, for projects like this, it's like mixed media projects, I wouldn't necessarily seal it. If I did want to seal it, I'd probably use the um, spray varnish. Um, do I need to seal the, okay, let's see, what else? Any other questions? All right, you guys, I hope you all have a great weekend and you have you have 15 minutes back we didn't go the full hour today julie we talked about expand paste at the beginning so you'll have to go back and re-watch the replay if you missed it we did the whole um the whole first part was on expand paste okay you guys will have a great 
weekend and I will hopefully see you Tuesday or Thursday or back here next week. Take care. Bye-bye.